Yo, welcome to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. It's your boy Mario RPG. Let's get into this. The White Councils of Middle Earth. This should be an interesting watch. Go check out the Men of the West. You know me. I'm always shouting out the channels I react to. Um, shout out to Men of the West. Go subscribe to them. Go check out their channel. Subscribe to my channel. Only if you want to, you never have to. And let's get into this. The White Councils of Middle Earth. All right, let me get my monitor off of low blue mode so this video looks as good as possible. And let's do it. But at length, the shadow returned, and its power increased, and in that time was first made the Council of the Wise that is called the White Council, and therein were Elrond, and Galadriel, and Círdan, and other lords of the Eldar, and with them were Mithrandir and Kuronir. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, hey. wherever you are in Middle-earth on this fine day. Today, I want to explore the history of the two White Councils of Middle-earth and their members. Two? For indeed, there was a council in the Second Age, and the more well-known council in the Third. While I won't speak too much on the total history of the specific members of these councils concerning their actions outside of the councils, okay. I have other videos on those characters already, God, I love that make picture. those videos at some point, so please check those out. As always, links for more information are in the description and cards, so please check those out as well. My friends, thank you all for joining me today. I do appreciate it. Relax and enjoy as we explore the history of the White Council. Starting with the first White Council of the Second Age that met in circa 1701 of the Second Age, this council was joined after the Siege of Imladris and the end of the War of the Elves and Sauron. This council met and discussed mostly state matters of the Elves, and likely they reflected on the war insofar as I can tell, as they decided that the newly established Imladris or Rivendell would be the stronghold of the elves in Eriador, for Aregion to the south had fallen during the war. Elrond. I need to watch a video on like the history of Rivendell. Um, uh, so if anyone's got any suggestions on like the best videos regarding that, let me know in the comments down below. And let me know if that's something you'd like to see. Would be Rivendell's lord as the vice regent of High King Gilgalad. It also seems that during the time of this council, Gilgalad would give Elrond his elven ring Vilia for safekeeping. Now, the members of this council aren't explicitly mentioned, but surely Gilgalad and Elrond were members, and since they were in Imladris at that time, Lady Galadriel and Lord Celeborn would surely be members of the Second Age White Council, and perhaps even their daughter Celebrian would take part in it. Lords Círdan and Glorfindel were also likely members, as well as other elf lords and perhaps ladies of that time. Okay. Now, it's speculation on my part, but I might also imagine that this White Council of the Second Age, or at least some of its members, would also meet from 3431 to 3434 of the Second Age to make plans to stop Sauron during the War of the Last Alliance, as elves, men, and dwarves made ready for war. Whether it was with the end of Gilgalad, who was presumably the leader of this White Council, or it was due to the fall of Sauron at the end of the Age, this White Council of the Second Age was seemingly disbanded after the War of the Last Alliance. Coming now into the Third Age, the Wizards of Middle-earth arrived about a thousand years into the Age and some of them would be important actors within this council. However, it took until the year 2463 of the Third Age, after Saruman returned from business in the east, and a fell and dark presence returned to Dol Guldor, that the more renowned White Council of the Third Age, who may have named themselves in honor after the Council of the Second Age, was formed. Galadriel summoned the first meeting of this council that was formed to unite and lead the West in resistance. Is that art? Or is that from a game? Cause damn girl, how you doing? <laughs> oh my god. It um just a quick plug right here. Twitch.tv forward slash from RPG. Monday I'm starting Lord of the Rings Online for the first time ever on my Twitch. It's it's so simple. The link is in the description. All you do is go to my Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash from RPG, and hit the follow button. It's completely free. It's not gonna cost you anything. It's basically like subscribing on YouTube. Uh, and if you do that, then you'll know when I go live. And come watch Lord of the Rings Online, Monday. We're going to be doing it every Monday, and we're going to be calling it MMO Mondays. Uh, I'm really excited. It's against the Shadow. Before the Council had been formed and Saruman had returned from the East, however, Gandalf had investigated Dol Guldur some years before, and had ousted the Shadow at that time, in 2063, creating the Watchful Peace. But that feat was attributed to the White Council at large, and the Shadow had indeed returned since then. The members of this White Council that would oppose the Shadow I want to do my hair like Elrond one day. Try and tie it up like twice like that. Be Saruman the White, Gandalf the Grey, 
Look like a Elrond, giga chat. Elven, Lady Galadriel, Kirdan the Shipwright, and also likely Lord Celeborn, Lord Glorfindel, and perhaps other lords of the Eldar. Whether or not Radagast the Brown was a member of the council is up for debate, but surely he would have oh. aided the council in its endeavors if he was ever asked to. Look at that bear! Let me know in the comments down below what's your favorite animal. Mine's a bear. Mine are bears. I love bears. See, I, I wish we knew more about him. I need to watch a character history video about this guy. I just, he, he's, if you don't know who David Attenborough is, he's basically, a, just Google David Attenborough and watch some of his documentaries about animals. Absolutely amazing. He's a legend in England. Um, this guy's basically the David Attenborough of Middle Earth. And I'm, I know I'm okay with that. I love that he just didn't care about Sauron and just cared about animals and wildlife. Absolute legend. Um, I wish he was a... Uh, a bit, bit more of a prominent figure. I don't know. Is he is he in the books a lot? I don't know. I don't know. I'll need to watch a character history video about him. But if he likes bears, hey, he's a friend of mine. In its endeavors, if he was ever asked to. Now, although Galadriel had summoned the council, she looked to Gandalf the Grey, whose wisdom was perhaps greatest of all the members to lead it. But in his wisdom, he refused, taking no ties and no allegiances to any except the Valar who had sent him. And so too did he wish to be free to live abroad and wander and not to be subject to any summons. And so Saruman, whose knowledge of the devices of Sauron were greater than any of the members, took up the leadership of the White Council, for he too was the chief of the Order of the Wizards. But Saruman in his pride and jealousy would begrudge Galadriel's nomination of Gandalf. At the second meeting, the Council met in Rivendell to discuss Gandalf's findings in Dol Guldur. Gandalf, who went to Dol Guldur in 2850, discovered that the Dark Presence therein was Sauron, not some lesser servant of darkness. And so the wizard brought his findings to the council the next year in 2851, and he urged an attack on Dol Guldur. Saruman, however, who then already wanted the ring for himself, had grown jealous of Gandalf and hated him because of his rivalry with the great God, wizard. God, that amazing. And he spoke against this proposed attack on Dol Guldur, saying that the One Ring must have gone down the Anduin out to sea, and Sauron would never recover it. While he spoke out against Gandalf and his plan, Grey Wizard sat apart from the others, smoking his pipe and not speaking. Once the meeting was adjourned, Saruman criticized Gandalf and his silence and smoking, to which Gandalf replied that Saruman would not wonder at it if he used it himself, and he would find that the smoke cleared his mind of shadows within, and that it actually gave patience to listen to error without anger. For once we can all agree that we're Team Saruman. Smoking's bad, don't smoke. I smoked for years and quit, and I've never felt better. Don't be like Gandalf, be like Saruman. <laughs> Gandalf then spoke of how it was an art of a little folk to the West, not that Saruman would take much account of them in his high and important policies. Of course, this just angered Saruman, and the White Wizard said he knew Gandalf joked, but that Saruman knew he was an explorer of small childish things. But his time was his to spend, and that for Saruman the days were too dark for small things of peasants, as he called them. Gandalf did not laugh at these insults, nor did he say a word. He just smoked out rings and put up his hand to grasp at them ere they vanished. Then he got up and left Saruman, who was silent and in a dark mood of doubt and displeasure. There are different versions of how this story went, but Saruman was ultimately made suspicious of Gandalf, for it seemed Gandalf was implying he knew Saruman wanted the ring for himself, and was grasping at it. Or that since Gandalf was smoking the halfling's leaf, he knew there was some connection between the One Ring and the hobbits already. Of course, while the former may have been true, and Gandalf was perhaps suspicious of Saruman, even though Gandalf would still trust Saruman until his betrayal at Orthanc during the events of the Lord of the Rings, the latter could not have even been possible, for Bilbo had not been born yet, let alone had there been any connections between the hobbits and the One Ring yet. But Saruman may have assumed much reflecting upon this event for the many years to come, up until and after his betrayal. Although nothing was truly done because of Saruman's filibuster during the council, Elrond spoke to Gandalf that he forbade the One Ring would be found again, and that war and the end of the age would come. It seemed a second darkness would come after all, unless some strange fate delivered them from it. But Gandalf said many were the strange chances of the world, and that help would come from the hands of the weak when the wise faltered. Indeed, nice. the wise were faltering in their mighty councils, and though they had the strength to combat Sauron then, they failed to do so. God, the council would meet wise. again in 2941 of the Third Age, 
When it became clear to Gandalf that with or without the One Ring, Sauron would become too powerful for them to overthrow if they continued to do nothing. He had to be ousted from Dol Guldur and opposed. This time Saruman, the head of the council, assented, wanting to stop Sauron from being able to search the River Anduin for the Ring. And so it was that the White Council finally acted, launching their assault on Dol Guldur, and their combined strength was enough to oust him from his fortress in Mirkwood, and some measure of peace was brought back to that dark forest for a time, during the quest of Erebor. But still, Sauron anticipated this move, and his retreat from Dol Guldur was but a fame, for his servants, the Nine Nazgul, had made Mordor ready for his return, and so he willingly fled from Dol Guldur and returned to Mordor to rebuild Barad-dûr and make ready for his war on the west. While the White Council had a short-lived victory, it was hollow and late indeed, for it is likely that had they acted at the last meeting, almost 100 years before, they would have injured Sauron and his plans far more. And so it came to pass that after Sauron's open declaration of his return to Mordor in 2951, the White Council met one last time in 2953, and discussed then the Rings of Power. Saruman feigned that he had discovered that the One Ring had indeed passed down the Anduin to the Great Sea. He revealed much of Ringlor that quieted Gandalf's fears about Bilbo's ring, and though Gandalf might have consulted with Saruman about the One Ring, something always held him back from doing so. This was likely mm. doubt, and even fear, of Saruman's true intentions. For indeed, after this meeting, Saruman went back to Isengard and his Tower of Orthanc, and he would not take counsel again with the wise, falling in years to come to his own ambition and the evil counsels of Sauron. And while members of the council would meet and discuss great matters in years hence, such as Gandalf at Isengard with Saruman in 3018, in the revelation of Saruman's betrayal, or the Council of Elrond that same year, or even when a majority of the White Council spoke in the lands of the North on the return journey after the destruction of the One Ring in 3019, or in many other moments, there would never again be a full meeting of the White Council after the one in 2953, for the head of the council betrayed the West, and Gandalf's foretelling of lesser hands helping when the wise faltered was true. Gandalf the White would seemingly take up the mantle as the leader of the White Council, and even the leader of the Wizards, for he acted with the authority to cast Saruman from the Council and Order of the Astari during the events of the War of the Ring. It's fascinating, for upon my reflections while making this video, it actually seems that the White Council, while the members were individually powerful, and while together the Council was made of the most powerful beings in Middle-earth during the Third Age, did not accomplish that much together as the White Council, and mostly because Gandalf did not take up the mantle of leadership at the very beginning. While I respect this decision and Gandalf's aversion to the acceptance of power in general, one of Gandalf's only character flaws is his reluctance to believe in himself, and that made the Council uh. far less effective than it otherwise might have been with him leading it. Saruman made it rather ineffective, and Sauron may have been thwarted earlier and perhaps more often had Gandalf's advice and counsel been acted upon. Gandalf does, however, go on to use his freedom from the council to do many great actions by himself. Advice it, it, that's a great debate, but I think I, I think that's also that also can be spun into a positive of Gandalf's character. Um, he never he never wants a, a uh, I guess a crazy place of power. I I guess you could say it, it, it is basically. Not, not, not quite believing himself, but always seeing that when someone's in a place of power, it can go down a dark, dark path. And knowing how powerful he is, if he was, you know, if he went down that path, then it would be, it would be over for everyone. So I can see why he didn't. I can see why he didn't. And hey, it worked out in the end, right? <laughs> the leaders of peoples to take action, and he also amended many of the evils of Sauron in his fight against Sauron. It's rather interesting to think about all of this, and how the actions of all of these characters impacted the greater fate of the world in the White Council, but it's also interesting to see how much more they could have done. And so we come to the end of our tale about- I feel like Elrond should have led the Council. I feel like he was a born leader, in my opinion. Except when- except when asking a Steeldor to do things. Steeldor's that now, bro. the White Councils of Middle-earth. From this tale, we see that the ability to act must be balanced with the will to take those actions. If we are able to help others or the world at large in any way, we should. Thank you all so much for watching. That was a really good video, man. Video. There was a lot of that, a lot of stuff there I didn't, I didn't know about. Oh, history of the ages, bless them. See what happened to their channel. Uh, history of the ages channel now is. Uh, 
Oh, I need to show you guys. I need to show you guys just in case you weren't aware. Their new channel is called The Broken Sword. Basically, copyright stuff got to them. And so go and check out this channel, The Broken Sword. Oh, they've got a video. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh it's such a such a such a horrible story what happened to them. But they'll they'll be just fine, I I think. So go and go and subscribe. This is their new channel. I was like for ages, I was like, what's happened to the history of the ages? They're like my favourite channel on YouTube and unfortunately copyright strikes and which was completely out of their control. Like one of the artists even didn't want to follow through with his copyright strike, but YouTube's just well being YouTube, unfortunately. Um so yeah, their new channel is called The Broken Sword. Definitely go and check that out. They're gonna have amazing content. Um and yeah, I'll definitely watch this. I can't wait to react to that. Um but yeah, back to the back to the comments. Just just in case no one knew. Uh, the White Council is a fantastic example of how important friendship and alliances are when standing against evil. No matter how strong you are, and your friends and allies will make you stronger. So relaxing and entertaining. Galadriel was right to suggest Gandalf to head of the White Council, but Gandalf turned down a position meant Saruman further gave into his pride and desire of mastery. No, I feel like Gandalf's getting blamed here for something that he he just... I don't see the problem with him not wanting to lead. I feel like Elrond should have been the leader of the council, in my opinion. Your love of the halfling's leaf has clouded your judgment. <laughs> a, wizard, a wizard arrives precisely when he means to, bro. <laughs> that was another great video, man. I love Men of the West's video. Go check them out. Subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the vibes. And don't forget, twitch.tv forward slash RPG. MMO Mondays, we're going to be playing Lord of the Rings Online. Never played it. I'm going to be doing it solo, but if you're a subscriber on my Twitch channel, you can join in. Uh, I will be posting content on YouTube, but go and follow my Twitch anyway, man. It's, it's, a, it's a good deed for the day, right? Thank you so much for watching.